That's going to be a lot of questions. Got it. You're live. Welcome. I want to welcome everyone today to Project 365. My name is uh, Dr. David M. Walker, and I just want to welcome all of you to uh, Project 365. And I just want to start off by thanking the host of this platform, Pastor Portia Wheatley. Um, she has allowed us to come on as the guest host on this phenomenal platform. And this week has been a week, all week men have been on the program and uh, inspiring inspirational words for men. And this week we are speaking into the lives of men, whether you are a husband, a father, a nephew, a uncle, a lover, an encourager, a teacher, it doesn't matter what your role is as a man, we are speaking to you this week. And uh, it is the intention of this platform uh, to, uh, to empower, render hope, and encouragement and inspiration to men. And this week we are focusing particularly on black men. So I wanna thank Pastor Portia Wheatley for allowing us to host, uh, as to guest host this particular platform. And this week we are focusing on the impact of a man. Now you've had great conversations all week long for those of you who had been tuning in. Uh, we had brother Lewis Thomas was here and uh, Bishop Reginald Sellers, uh, Bishop Eugene Bellinger was here, and we're here today just to do our part in talking with the brothers and, and men, you know, around the globe, because this is a global platform. And so today, my topic is free to be a man, how to be free to be a man. And that, that's, that's a powerful topic right there. And I didn't come alone, and I brought some brothers with me today. Uh, and we're going to have an outstanding conversation. First, I have, and they're going to introduce themselves. Uh, first, I have Pastor uh, David Ings. He's here with me today. And then I have uh, uh, Dr. Brian Easley. So gentlemen, introduce yourselves. Tell us what you do, and then we'll get started with the conversation. My name is Pastor David Ings. I'm the founder and pastor of Momentum Christian Ministries. Uh, I also am a technologist. Uh, for almost 30 years now, um, a com computer programmer and engineer in the technology sector. All right. Doc, Dr. Ings? I mean, Dr. I get, listen, I'm prophesying, David. Come on. <laughs> right. I'm receiving. I'm receiving. Dr. Easley. <laughs> uh, good afternoon, Dr. Walker and Pastor Ings and Pastor Wheatley. It's a pleasure to be here. My name is Brian Easley, and I'm originally from uh, Harlem, New York, and have been living in the Beltsville area for about uh, 30 years now, Beltsville, Maryland, that is. And uh, my areas of expertise are in organizational development, human resource development, and career development. And I just recently retired as the Chief Learning and Diversity Officer for the United States Department of Transportation, and I'm very pleased to be here with you. All right. So here's what I want to do. I, I want to take off uh, the masks. I want to, you know, shed a little bit of heavy weight. And uh, the rest of the way, uh, it's going to be easily Ings and Walker. We're going we're gonna to put the titles aside <laughs> because we got some brothers that need some help. So I want them to know that we're just, we're brothers just like they are. You, you want to call me David, call me David. It's Brian and we got David again. So we're real brothers coming here, trying to help other brothers to be free to be a man. So now that these brothers have introduced themselves as to what they do, I want y'all, the both of you to tell us who you are. Uh, whether you are a husband, a father, uh, what do you do in the community? Uh, uh, just tell us who we are. I want to start with uh, 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 David Ings again. Just Dave, tell us, uh, tell us about your family. That's really what I'm trying to get to, your family. Just tell us about that. Absolutely. Well, I am a, I am a husband. I'm married to my wife, uh, Evangelist Stephanie Ings, and I'm a father. And I have my daughter who lives out there in the <laughs> How long are you married? We got, don't, let's get oh, that yeah. out. How long? <laughs> 20 years, man. 
20 years. I we love celebrated it. 20 years this year. Wow. Yes. Go ahead. And we just thank God for that. And, and my daughter, who lives out there in a the sunny uh, state of, of Florida, uh, she's out there where you are. Okay. Uh, and we thank God for her. And I have obviously, um, basically, I, as a pastor, you know, my organization, what we do, um, we, we, we are more, we're very, very, very much community center oriented. Okay. And which, what, what that means to, to momentum is that all of our programs run out of parks and recs and uh, uh, community center. Um, before the pandemic, we were in um, Fourth and Lombard and there in Philadelphia mm -hmm. at Old Pine Community Center. It's, I, I usually tell people we're the host pastor or I'm the host pastor there because every Sunday morning, that's where we ran our service. Right. And so in the community, we offer people to come in um, for, for fellowship pastor, and such like. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm I sorry, thought I heard ahead. someone. Yeah. Um, and in the community, we I have a program and Dr. David, you know about this program. It's called Tattoo is one of the highlights of, yeah. of what of what I do. And and a lot of that was to answer the the gun violence and a lot of the homicides that were happening in the city. Mm -hmm. um, and tattoo, we use the letters as an acronym. It stands right. for tough answers, tough topics often overlooked. And one of my mottos were that if you if you if you're full, of, especially as preachers, you're mm -hmm. full of a lot of zeal, you're full of Holy Ghost power and fire. You ought to take that to a dark place and strike a match. Wow. And so and, and that's what I've done. I've mm -hmm. looked for dark places. And that's why in, there in South Philadelphia or well, one person told me that one of the places we have our program is called the killing field. Okay. So that's a, a term they use because so many of our young people were just being shot and killed in that area. And when they learned of my tattoo program and, and anger management is part of that and fear and, and, and phobias and, and what, what not, they said that would be perfect for the community. Ever since then, we've been running that program for about seven, almost eight years now in it's the okay. community ministering to families. Good. And, and that's powerful. And, and I want you to come back to that because, you know, that's your work in the community because you're building I mean, you're working with the community, but a part of it is building young men. And Absolutely. I want to come back to that because, and then something that you and I did recently where we were working with, oh. you know, young men, and, and maybe we'll, we'll talk about that. But I want to get to Brian because I, I'm focusing right now on, you know, who we are, you know, as husbands and fathers and so on. And, and I want Brian to, to share something with us uh, about him and his family and uh, love to hear your story, Brian. I mean, yeah, Thank Brian. you, David. Yep. Thank you, yep. David. I'm thinking right now I need to change my name to David for some reason. <laughs> uh, but I, I'll roll with Brian right now. There you go. Uh, David, as, as, as I, I mentioned earlier, I'm originally from Harlem, New York, and, and, and Harlem and, and the hood is in my blood. And as a father, I have two wonderful children who are in their mid-20s. Uh, both are college graduates. One has a graduate degree. I was I had the blessing of being married to a wonderful woman for 30 years and uh, 32 years we were together. And unfortunately she transitioned uh, about a year ago. We celebrated uh, her transition a few days ago on December 5th um, due to stage four liver cancer. Uh, but during that period of time, we had a wonderful run, some great love. Uh, no relationship is perfect, of course, but right. it was healthy. And um, one of my passions right now, I made a pact to myself back when I was in the United States Air Force many decades ago, that I was going to be a credit to my community. That's one of the things I committed to. So I've always embraced mentorship wherever I've been on the planet in an academic environment and a private setting, 20 years in the federal government, um, off, off the clock, on the clock, wherever there. That's always been extremely important to me. And it was a facet of my dissertation, as a matter of fact. So, And now um, that I've retired a few months ago, my passion is swinging toward really, really developing and cultivating health, healthy manhood, helping myself as well as helping brothers to understand the concept of healthy manhood. I think mm. many of us, not, as, as men, not just black men, but men on the right. planet, so, have some very distorted views of what manhood is. And I'm looking absolutely. to work with an organization about fatherhood as well. So that's where my passions are leading me right now. You know, and that's great. And, and, and I want to go back. I want to go back because you said something that is very powerful 
you've lost your wife. Now, mm -hmm. now there's not a man in the world, especially when he is in love with his wife, mm -hmm. who knows what that means until you have actually lost her and she has transitioned. And, mm -hmm. you know, obviously I have to celebrate you in that because uh, when mm -hmm. we're talking about, let's say the measure of a man, you know, that's a part of manhood that none of us really anticipate when you get into this journey, especially with marriage, yes. that one day you partner with someone and yes. then it's going to come a time when you have to walk alone. That, that's manhood right there. That's manhood one-on-one. And mm -hmm. I just want you just to just a little bit more just to talk about th that that's feeling and experience. And what, what did that teach you having lost your wife as a man? That's a great question, Dave. I, I think one thing, I, just to give you context, my wife, Jackie, battled cancer for 20 years. She was first diagnosed in 2000, and then she was diagnosed again in 2004, and then again in 2017. Nice. So uh, as, I, as we looked in the mirror, as we went through that journey together, we celebrated. We realized that at any moment, this could have had a different ending, but the Lord, if I may say so, gave us 20 years, uh, 30 years in total, but 20 years after her first diagnosis. So, uh, and, and to understand the grieving process really begins when you first hear your significant other is diagnosed with cancer. And then the big one was in 2004 right. with a brain tumor. You begin to grieve at that point, you know, not that you're saying goodbye or whatever, but you begin to prepare yourself, you know, right. for what may happen, what may happen. But I look at it that we were blessed to raise two children together, establish a wonderful household, a healthy relationship. And I think she's in a better place than many of us are. And I, <laughs> and I ask myself, you know, when I start to feel down about her uh, transition, what would she want me to do? Uh, and she yeah. would want me to, yes, grieve and go through that process. And as men, we have to give ourselves license to experience emotions other than just anger. Right. Okay. Right. We've been given yeah. license for the anger, but others we haven't. Grief and sorrow. Uh, and I remember seeing brothers who used to come to a funeral, my father, my uncle, and they had sunglasses on, you know, mm. and I didn't realize. I thought they were just trying to be cool, but turned out they were really masking their tears there. Right. So right. she gave me license. I gave myself license to grieve. But at some point, I wanted to be able to celebrate her life because that I know that's what she wanted. And I know that's what I wanted as far as to be able to be a, continue to be a healthy father in other roles I had on the planet. I love what you just said, that your wife gave you license to grieve. And sometimes as black men, mm. they've already given us license to, as you said, to be angry. Yes, yes. But there's an alternative to anger, you know, which is love and, and peace and, and reflection, because yes. those are the things that's going to build you even right. when you go through an unexpected situation and yes. scenario. So I, I love what you said. Now, I want to move on here because our topic today, oh, before I do that, I can't let you guys get away with talking about how wonderful your marriages are and your wives. I, I got to <laughs> shout out my girl. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, I've been married to the same woman for the past 38 years. Shout out to my, my lovely wife, Emma. Um, she's, uh, we've been together for going on 41 and, uh, we have, uh, two children. We had two children that they're grown 35 and 32. And now we have two grandbabies, you know, so, so God is blessing life is, uh, cycling and it's just a wonderful time. So, um, I'm thankful. I'm grateful for the life that the Lord has, has given me. So, but now I want to go to. Uh, again, our topic is uh, how to be free to be a man. And I want to ask both of you, I'm going to come to you, uh, David. Uh, why are you free to be a man? That's a good question. I'm, I'm free. I only ask good questions. Y'all yeah, yeah, might yeah. as well get used to that. I only <laughs> ask good questions. <laughs> come on. That is a good question. <laughs> and, you know, I thought about that. I'm, I'm, free to, I'm free to be a man because of the prototypes that were in my life and right. those prototypes have provided what I call lasting in, impressions mm. sometimes as as children we're impressionable and you and but those impressions don't last because somebody right. else came along the way and changed your mind mm -hmm. and so I'm free 
and and my masculinity and 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 celebrate and have pride in that because y'all yeah, start with my father okay you know he he was a man's man you know when we say that you know when you call someone a man's man that usually you know they're, they're they have there's mentorship involved in it everybody wants to be like him and so my father was a man's man you know from the sound of his voice he had a strong voice he was a man of business he was a man of integrity all you right. know, he was a man that 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 owed no man anything. You know, he 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 lived by that principle, and and things of that nature. So as a child, um, I had that impression, and and many other, and, and then rolls right into church fathers, mm. and I don't have many, right. but those who who have have been uh have impacted my life as a young child. Those impressions have been lasting. So no matter what environment I'm in, mm -hmm. I'm free to be a man i'm free sure, to sure, sure. to be everything that i know a man to be and and not to scale it down to accommodate an, an environment that doesn't celebrate it here's what i hear you say uh david uh if i can summarize you're talking about the power of a mentor yes yeah how powerful it is for a man to have a mentor if you don't have a mentor um well, let me put it this way. Why do you need a mentor? Here's the answer to that. A mentor is the person in your life who have made your mistakes for you. Oh, I, that'll preach right there. Somebody that'll that'll preach. preach. That'll preach right there. It's yeah, well, the yeah. person in your life who have made your mistakes for you. It's the person in your life who's not here to make you feel good but it's the person who's here to help you to get to where God wants you to go. Yeah. And sometimes as men, we think, well, I don't need no man to tell me what to do. Yes, mm -hmm. you do. We yes, you all do. need mentors. We That's all right. need uh, yes, someone sir. to speak into our lives to help yes. us to get to where we're trying to go. Uh, Brian, how yeah. about you? Uh, why are you free to be a man? I think, David, that, that's a multifaceted question, and it's a beautiful question, but I think one of the primary reasons, there's a couple. One is when you realize as a Black man, I believe, or as an African American, that you've been embedded, we've mm. been embedded collectively with so much self-hatred. Wow. And yes. so when that self-hatred is your anchor, it is your, uh, your, 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 the alpha, the omega for many, it mm -hmm. is the, the, the primary entity. You have to find ways to be as healthy as you can. One way is to really understanding your true history. Mm -hmm. You know, not his story, as some say, right. but really studying and understanding, not waiting for the school system to do it, but within your household, within yourself, to find out about our greatness, whether it was on the, the mother, in the motherland, in Africa, or wherever in this nation. I think secondly, I always look at education, not just formal education, but I, let me just say learning as mm -hmm. the, the true emancipator or the true liberator, yeah, you know? Yeah. And, and so if you're willing to learn and all people say knowledge is power, knowledge is power. Well, I, I, I challenge that. I think that's only part of the equation. Okay. I think when you really uh, have a thirst for knowledge, yes, but you also need to understand and comprehend the knowledge. You need to be part of creating the knowledge. You need to be part of, of, of application of the knowledge because you can possess all the knowledge, but if you don't know how to use it, and the real big one I think as African-American men is we need to be able to share that knowledge through mentorship, through mm -hmm. coaching, because uh, right. what, what good is it to you if you are hoarding that knowledge and it's me, 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 as right. opposed to we are and us. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, for me, education has been everything. Um, when I look back over my life, and I'm not going to get into my history, um, but I was a black man who came out of uh, off the streets of uh, Bedford Stuyvesant in Brooklyn, New York. I, I don't know if anybody's ever heard of uh, uh, Bed Stuy, as that we used to call it, but we had a tagline and it was called Bed Stuy, do or die. Do or die. Yeah, yeah. And uh, what that meant was either you got it done, which is the do, that means getting out of the community or, or coming up from the community, or die, which meant that the community got the best of you. And, um, and so it was, it was very challenging. And I, when I talk about education, as you mentioned, 
it was for me as a man who made me everything that I am. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I wasn't even intending to go to college. Never, my parents never talked about higher ed, going to college after high school. And I never even had an, I never, as I say, never took the SAT, never went on a college tour. Um, but I got an opportunity through sports and athletics that opened up a door for me. But I mm. didn't just go and play sports all my life, even though I love the game. I love sports. But at some point in my, academic, in my college years, I kind of woke up and realized that I'm not here just to play sports. I'm here to get my degree. And yes. fortunately, I did. I finished and you know, spent 30 years as an educator in New York City, uh, now in the possession of several degrees. And God gets all the glory uh, for that. So I love that part about education. But here's the next question as the time is moving on. And, uh, and to, to our guests, listen, I know some of you are watching. Uh, uh, say something in the chat. Let us know you're here. Maybe you can ask a question, something that you may want to get answered. And if we have time, we may answer it. But just go ahead and make, put some comments in the chat to let us know that you are watching us on uh, Project 365 Facebook Live. All right. So here's the next question. Why do you think uh, men are challenged to be free. The three of us talked about several things that made us to be free, but why do you think men are challenged to be free to be a man? And let's go with Brian first. Yeah, that's a, another great question, David. I, I, I think, and I, 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 I <laughs> there you go again. <laughs> I, I would supplement not just being a man, but we're challenged in being humans. We're challenged okay. in being mature adults. I'm going to throw that word mature in there. And I think one of the reasons is that we, and this is men across the globe, have been placed in what a wonderful organization, a call to men refers to as a man box. Okay. Where, we, as we mentioned just a few minutes ago, there's only one emotion that most men have been given license to share with the world, and that is anger. And so, but we know most of us, as we are healing, know that there's a continuum, a wonderful continuum of emotions. But if you haven't been given license or permission or to say it's okay or validation to be able to share that, I, I'll give you an example. What is it we say to many of our young boys? Little David is playing in the schoolyard. He hits his head. He starts crying. And often the dad or somebody runs over to him and says what? Hey, David, boys don't cry. Mm, that's right. You know? yeah, yeah. And just think about the impact of that one statement to that young man. And I go back to what I said about my dad and others being in a funeral with those sunglasses on. Right. You know? Right. right. Okay. Because you're taking away his license, not just to cry and shed tears, but to say to the world, I hurt, I feel pain. You know? Mm. And so what happens to that young brother? He internalizes that. The pain doesn't go away. The hurt right. doesn't go away, but it manifests itself into something different. And usually it's something very antagonistic, very dysfunctional, and also reinforces that self-hatred. And, and you also uh, are, are suggesting that if you only internalize anger, then that's what you'll put out. You'll, you'll, you'll act exactly. upon that, you know? Exactly. Um, and, and, and we... As a man, we need a proper release, right? Yes, as human let beings. Me, let me back it up. Right, we need a release, but the release has to be a proper release. Yes, you know, very good. There's, there's a scripture in the Bible that yes. says, "Be angry, but what? Don't sin. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. don't mm -hmm. lose control. Yes, you know, don't feel that you got to tear up everything just because you're angry. Right, and, and especially, right. especially being a black man. We yes. know that there's oppression. We know that there's uh, systematic uh, uh, racism yes. and the system is not fair to us. But yes. the question is, how are you going to navigate an unfair situation? You know, are you going to allow that anger to bottle up inside of you where, you know, where you're uh, abusive to your to your family? You know what I'm saying? Or, yes. or, or you're doing something of a criminal nature because mm. you feel like, uh, well, they, they've done me wrong, so I have now this license to do this. No, you don't. Yes. You yes. know, because manhood, yes, as I said, you are supposed to release your emotions. You use the, the emotion of, of crying and, and, and weeping of tears. Yeah, that's human. But it has to be proper. 
And I think that that's important because we got other people watching us. Yes. A man has his son watching and he wants to know how are you going to respond, uh, uh, you know, in a situation because the way you respond is the same way he's going to respond. Am I right? Yes. About that? Absolutely. yes. Come on, Dave. Say, say, the question was, what do you think? Why do you think men are challenged to be free to be a man? Well, number one, our culture has diminished the position of a man, you know, in the family. Okay. First, first, that's one thing. Yeah, and talk we're about the, that because that's important right there. Yeah, culture. the nuclear the nuclear family isn't as celebrated now. Right. You know, for, for a variety of reasons. Right. And that goes way back, you know, but mm -hmm. and and it, and it's increasing where of course you have single family homes or what have you, and that has its place, but often it's becoming more celebrated and more planned to be that way, where the man's not needed. Right. I don't need a man. I don't like you just mentioned. Um, that that's that that becomes a mantra to many. I don't need a man. Don't mean don't need a man. And we can raise children without men. And so that's a cultural thing. And, I, and that's a wide discussion. We could go further far with that. But because of that culture component, that in and of itself makes it hard. It, mm. it, it challenge. Mm. It challenges men who really want to be men who are men. Right. And like I said, like myself, I'm I'm encouraged to continue to be who I am, irregardless of the culture or the environment, because of the impression and the conviction, which I have as being a man. And then another thing I wanted to mention is, believe it or not, and I'll, I'll put it out there, even the the hip hop culture, mm -hmm. um, which is a culture in it within a culture. Right. And the reason why I bring that out is because, you know, some people may disagree with me. But one of the things, if you look at some of uh, some of these rappers are encouraged to to be little, you know, you got little baby, you got little <laughs> Wayne, you got the baby. And, and these, these aren't men titles. Wow. And so and, they, you're and, starting something here. Ing. I, you're starting something. Little baby, <laughs> little Wayne, the baby, the baby, <laughs> and little Bow Wow. I mean, you, it goes. On. And yeah. so but what happens is. And, and, you know, nothing against those artists and what have you, but you know, there, there's a sublim subliminal message to stay little right. or to, to, to have that mindset of, of a baby as opposed to being a man. And I'm going to be honest with you. I believe it presents a great challenge to a lot of our young men because mm -hmm. they see that if that's your focus to be the baby, you yeah. know, and that, that, that connotates to a lot of things as opposed to being the man. Right, right. Let, let's be the man. How about that? Yeah. And, and what that means. So those, those, and to, those two areas, there yeah. are others, but those two areas are prominent that, that yeah. I care to mention now that make, make it challenging to be a man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you're starting something. Were you going to say something, Brian? Come on. You can no, I, I, I was just going to say, Dave, I, I agree uh, so much with Pastor Ings, or, or David, I should say. Um, that these, these, uh, the nomenclature, the names, uh, can create some subliminal messaging there that many of us in programming that we're not aware of. But I also wanted to come back to what you were saying, David, about uh, releasing anger, uh, and there's a proper way to do it. I would add also not just proper, but a healthy way yes, of doing yes. it. Yes, and I yes. think one, one of our ways of trying to strengthen our personhood, manhood, humanhood, if you will, is to realize that we need to work constantly on four areas, I think, of development. One of them is your cognitive or your mental development. How do you process information? How do you analyze? How do you make decisions? Another is the, our spiritual or our conscientious development there. Uh, do you have a connection with the upper room? If you're agnostic or atheist, have you really come to terms with that? I can't tell you, but I know faith is very important to me and has got me through so many things. Your emotional and social health. We're talking about this right now. Giving yourself license to feel pain, to be sorrowful, uh, to say that I hurt as opposed right. to keeping it bottled in. And last but not least, your physical health. Uh, mm -hmm. How often I'm trying to tell brothers, go and get checked in with your doctor at least once a year, man. You That's know, right. uh, get your blood work done and what have you. Look at what you take into your body. That's Look at right. your exercise. Look at uh, amount of uh, how much you eat. And these things work in sync with each other. If mm -hmm. one is out of sync, it's going to have an impact on the other. And I think when you really begin to understand that and practice it, 
The quest is not to be perfect. There's no such thing, but you can probably become the best person that you are or can be. Uh, 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 Brian, here's what I heard you say. To be a man, it's okay to process. It's important to be healthy. Yes. Because you cannot effectively be a man in its fullness unless you have, unless you are healthy in all aspects. That yes. means your physical health, your emotional health, yes. your financial health, because God yes. knows you can't be a man if you're not healthy financially. Thank you. Know? you. Thank um, you. Um, Thank you. And you mentioned others. Um, I just want to go here because Ings said something so powerful where we live in a culture and it, I don't think it's anything new about it, maybe a little different today, but the culture says, I don't need a man. Don't need a man. And I think that and, and the reason why I say that there's nothing new is because the male has been under attack from the yes. very beginning. We can go yes. back. I, I can pull out a couple of uh, uh, biblical texts. You know, yes, they sir. tried to kill Moses. Yes, sir. Why? Because there was destiny and purpose on his life, right? Yes. Uh, true. And if I could stick with that story just a little bit, it wasn't just him. It was all the males, right? Yes. Because yes. they were hearing stories of, you know, Whatever God was going to do, and he was, but he was yeah. going to use. Don't raise him up. He's going to raise That's him right. up and use these men. So there was an attack on him, and his mother had to save him through the basket. We all know that story. Mm -hmm. And then even when we talk about, you know, Jesus Christ, yes, he was the savior of the world, but he was male. That's right. So, 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 so his the attack on him, yes, some could say spiritually because he was the savior of the world. I got that, but he was still in a male body. Mm. And so the tack was also the fact that they knew, because when uh, I think it was Herod, Dave, you the preacher, <laughs> uh, uh, Herod <laughs> was, was, was fearful that yes, he was. Could, this potential king is coming. That's no, right. we can't have that. We can't have this man to come and take my throne. So I'm, I'm preempting his, his growth. I'm going, if you find him, kill him. And they had to, you know, uh, 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 get him out of Jerusalem and down into Egypt. You know, things like that. And so why am I bringing that up? It's because the male species has been under attack from the very beginning. Why? Yes, because the enemy of our souls know that when a man stands up, and, and Dave, you said it best, when he is not the baby, when he's not uh, a little this or that, and listen, some of them want to be only 50 cent, but I'd rather be a whole dollar. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. that yeah, I want to be the whole saying? dollar. I want to be the whole dollar. You know, as the kids say, a hundred, right? And no I want to be one hundred. I want to be a hundred. Right. Right. <laughs> Ninety-nine and a half won't do. <laughs> won't do. Won't do. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, so it is so impactful and powerful, and we have to stand up as men. All right. Um, let's go here. Um. I want to ask this question because a lot of times men deal with challenges in their, in their lives. I, I don't think that anyone would say that, um, you know, being a man, you're not going to experience some challenges in your life. But I want to ask this question. Can I be free to be a man and yet have issues that I'm dealing with? Can I be free to be a man, but yet I'm struggling with issues. I'm dealing with issues. Do those issues define me? That's really what I want to get to. And uh, go ahead, Dave, you start with that. I would say, first of all, yes. How be it? You're going to need encouragement. Okay. Because a lot of, a lot of what makes us to be men and when we falter and fail, again, in our culture, we'll just uh, assassinate this man mm. and his character and who he is, whether it be a father or a husband, um, and shoot him down because of one mistake or his inability to produce wealth mm -hmm. or, or to do and what, what he really desires to do. And he may not be able to articulate it well, but there's a culture that would just assume assassinate him, mm. you know, where he stands because you're failing right. to be a man. You're not living up to this. So there's a, that, that, that to be in order for him to be a, to still identify as him and rise up in the midst of that and tap into, you know, his, his God-given ability to overcome, 
Mm -hmm. You need encouragement for that. Sure, sure. When I mentioned before about prototypes, and 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 I, and I, you'll hear me keep saying that because I, I share that a lot because I realize a lot of men, young men, who don't ra rise up to be the man that they could be because they didn't have any. Um, number one, they didn't have a prototype, and number right. two, as they were in pursuit, they didn't have anyone to encourage you to say you you are the man. Mm. You are you, you you never know how much that how, how much that impacts a young man. For a grown man, I remember when my neighbor said it to me, when my father had passed, and, and it, 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 sound, it may seem like a small thing, but a real man can understand this. When, when my dad had passed away, mm. one of my neighbors walked up to me and said, Dave, you are the man now. That man, that, that thing went, that, that resonated inside. He don't even realize. And this man, it's not like I had a special relationship with him. Right. It's just that as because he was a man you know, okay. I've seen him, you know, the way he goes about in the neighborhood, take care of his wife and family. And, you know, I was a young boy. Well, I was a young man at that time. But to have a, another man speak that just just those few words, mm -hmm. you are the man. So the, the, the household, you know, the, 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 and, and that and such like was on my shoulders that we need encouragement. That's all I'm trying to say. You you're, in order to do it. You're going to have a, a systematic way of uh, having prophetic voices mm. being surrounded by prophetic voices that speak that into you. If you don't have that, it, it's going to be very, it's going to be even more difficult. You know, sometimes men question whether or not they should speak to another man, especially mm. a young man. But we all need to realize you know, the scripture says uh, death and life in the power of the tongue. Yeah. Our words are powerful. Yes. And, and the job of a man is really to speak life into another man. That's and that's what happened with Dave. He, that's what you're saying. You're saying that some man, somebody said something to you that gave you life. It was a man, mm -hmm. right? That man, man, that man told you you're a man. And, and sometimes we don't understand how powerful just two or three words. Totally. You're the man. What was that? Three, four. Yep. You're the man. That's yes. it. That's all you needed. And it and it pro and no doubt that it inspired you to step up and to be the man that you are today. And yes. I think that every man, if you're listening to this conversation today and you're a man, God is ordering you to speak life into another man because you don't know what he's going through. If I can go back to what mm -hmm. Dave was saying, sometimes when brothers are falling. We got to ask questions. Yeah. Don't just assume, you know, why are you doing this? I mean, that's the question that should be asked. You should be asking of yourself and then asking of him, or at least trying to find out. Like you said, did he have a mentor? Was his father in his life? What kind of trauma has he experienced through his life? And usually the, when, when people act out, and it doesn't matter the age, when people act out, it's usually because of a, a trauma that happened earlier in their life. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Some yes. some childhood trauma, some experience yes. that brought great pain, and they have not, as David, as uh, Brian said, have not healthily yeah. processed the pain and the anger, and then yes. they're constantly acting yes. out. But we the first thing we want to do is lock them up, put them in jail, because that's easy. That's right. easy, but it's hard. When you want to sit somebody down and say, brother, let's, let, let me talk with you. I, I, I don't want anything. I just want to have a conversation with you. And then you will get a better result from young black men when they know that you care. Because if I sit down with you, getting mm. ready to talk to you, that's the first indication that I care about you. It is. That's yes. it. Am that's I right it. about that? that? You're right oh, about that. Dave, Come you're on. spot on. Once you get that, that hook. Like yep. you just said so yeah. eloquently, once you get that young or older brother or whoever on the planet to know that you genuinely empathize. Yes. Yes. And it may, yes. it may take a while for them to get there, but once they get it and they embrace it and they receive it, man, some powerful stuff can happen, That's you right. know, in a mentorship, in a coaching relationship, in a friendship, and as a paternal figure on the planet, whatever there, if you can get them to that point where they trust you, because many That's of them... Their, their trust, huh, David, has been uh, challenged. It's been, I 
remember I was sitting in a meeting many years ago with a psychiatrist who was working at uh, St. Elizabeth's Hospital. And he said to me, I'll never forget it. He said, Brian, you'd be surprised at the number of young boys in St. Elizabeth's who have been victimized sexually by their own fathers. Yeah, yeah. Now you imagine what that does to you, though that one event or those series of events as far as your ability to trust, to love, to, to engage in life there. But once, if you can stick with them, and I submit to all of us, just get hold of one or two, just get hold of one or two out of your immediate environment, your immediate circle, and commit to them. Because like David said, if you give them time, mm. that's all they really want, because they're not getting it from anybody else. And if they don't get healthy time, they'll find it somewhere else, i.e. a gang or, or some other way. And Dr. David, if I could add one thing to, 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 um, Craig, I'm, I'm sorry, your name. Brian, Brian, <laughs> Brian that's all right. I don't know where Brian. I got Craig from. Uh, that's all right, Dave. Uh, Mr. Craig, one of the things that, that well, in the gospel, Jesus, one of the things we know about God that often are taught is it's the long suffering. Mm. It's the forbearance and it's the goodness. See, it's those qualities. If, if we're all honest with ourselves and, and, and our salvation, if I could go there for a moment, we were, were upheld or sustained and, and are encouraged or even here today. Yes. Because somebody, because God was long suffering, he hung in there with us. And, that, and that's what made the difference. It wasn't, it wasn't a one shot deal. It's when, when I fell multiple yes. times and, yes. and, and, he, and he established a testimony in me that you were always there. One songwriter said, you were always there all the time, waiting patiently. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. so, when, yeah. when, when, Mr. Bryant, when you were talking about that trust, that, that, that is established over time. When a yes. child can know yes. that, you're, that you're not going to go anywhere. That's it. Because a lot, a lot of times the programs we have in the community, I've seen people start programs, nice programs, but they leave because, you know, the impact of the community wasn't the way they wanted it to be. Mm -hmm. and, and that's understandable. I just right. thank God that uh, I, I do see that what these young people need in order to establish that trust, they also need to know that you're going to be there. You're spot on, Dave. And this, this, this is not rocket science, you know. And, and I will add just a couple with what you were saying, David, so eloquently. I think there are three distractions, man. There are many out there, self-hatred being the big one. But one is egocentrism. I think we've become too self-centered. And I say to folks, listen to how many times people use the pronouns me, I, and my as opposed to we are and us. Yeah. And I, I hope you have a different outcome, but we have become not, and I don't mean focusing on self to take care of self and improve self. No, I mean being self-centered and being selfish. I think the another distraction is materialism, man. Uh, you, you know, you speak of Jesus and I, I don't think Jesus lived in a, as I understand the Lord, lived in a, a mansion or, 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 or what have you there or wore the finest clothing or, or, or rode in a Cadillac, you know. Uh, I believe Jesus was a humble spirit and material things didn't mean, mm. they don't mean you can't take them with you, but we will yes. kill, we will fight, we will have arguments about clothes, about who has the biggest house and all this stuff. I'm not impressed. Those are distractions. The other entity that I think is really a distraction is hedonism. We're mm. too much into pleasure, having a good time, and, and that distracts you from going to work and doing the work. You just want to self-medicate. You just want to have fun. You just want to enjoy yourself. And the pleasure principle, I think, is really uh, in its uh, destroying us as a planet. I want to uh, address two comments that are in the chat. One is a comment, and then one is a question. Uh, I'm going to start <laughs> with this wonderful young lady because, and I call her young because she says, uh, I will be 90 years old on my next birthday. This is uh, Mother Carrie Barnes. I'll be 90. She says, I've seen a lot. It's nothing like seeing a man walk in God's footsteps. Men, you make a difference in the world. This is coming from a 90-year-old woman. And basically what she's saying is the steps of a good man mm -hmm. are ordered by the Lord. So I want to thank uh, Mother Carrie Barnes mm -hmm. for acknowledging the uh, importance of a man yes. in, in, in life, in society. And then yes. we have a question by uh, Bishop Stephen Walker. I kind of know this, this young man. <laughs> uh, 
but I'm going to address the bishop's uh, question, and I'm going to just kind of summarize it. He said, is there a model for manhood that men should follow? Is there an established model of manhood that all men should follow? And if so, what do we think that it is? I've got I've got a response to that. Uh, All right, come on. And, and 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 you talked about us bringing resources, David. And there is a wonderful book uh, okay. by Dr. Naeem Akbar, who's a wonderful psychologist. I believe he's still with us. It's called Visions for Black Men. And what Dr. Akbar talks about in about eighty pages or so is the difference between a male, a boy, and a man. Mm. And it has very little to do with chronology. Gotcha. Okay. It has more to do with attitude, your approach to life, your decision-making, your values, your priorities in life and what have you there. And he talks about, we have many males who basically are over the age of 18, 21, but they don't use this mm -hmm. as far as their decision-making and their processing. They're very visceral. Then you have boys who are using this, but they're using it as an adolescent, as a boy, where they're self-centered, not community-oriented, et cetera. And we need to have more men. And he talks about what being a man, a healthy man is all about. And again, it's not about perfection, but it's about your commitment, not just to yourself, but to your family, to your community, and to the greater good of the planet. Uh, Pastor Ng, David Ings, can uh, you answer that question? I can. Uh, sure. One of the, I would have to point to Bible scripture, basically mm -hmm. the word of God, we find our prototype. Okay. You know, and, and the Bible talks a lot about marriage and how to be a husband, how mm -hmm. to be a father. These mm -hmm. things are spoken, you know, throughout the word of God, especially in the New Testament, you find what a leader should be, you know, especially in the Lord's church from a bishop to a deacon. And mm -hmm. so those are those types. I, I believe those are prototypes. I believe the, that's a template. Mm -hmm. for um and how things should be now one of the resources that i would like to share is it's on one of our websites is on uh www.momentumcm.org and there one of the pages we have our mb keeper my brother's keeper and i started that organization a while ago or that program a while ago and that was more toward mentoring mentorship and combating gun violence and and anger and whatnot in the community and i and i have listed 20 things that we need to change you know as as as, as a man and and it change things you change your mind of, about you know life and not death and and many other things to how to establish uh, economic gains in a community as opposed to uh felony charges and such like so i have all of that listed on uh my brother's keeper was very uh, very telling or more pointed to the actual passage of scripture. I know there are a lot of other organizations that have my brother's keeper that are more do benevolence and what have you. But we answered a question that, that was uh, asked of, 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 of Cain. It's, it's, where's your brother? Mm -hmm. And he said, am I my brother's keeper? And the answer is emphatically, yes. Absolutely. Yes, we are. And, 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 here, and here's the ways that we are. So that prototype is, it, it is there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we're gonna always find uh, the model of manhood through the scriptures. I'm sure that we can pull out many of them um, that would suggest that and would establish manhood. It could be taught, it could be uh, preached, it could be disciplined. But I also think that uh, manhood and how to be a man is taught by uh, many things. Mm -hmm. Number one, experience. You know, I may, may not necessarily put it over anything else, but there's something about experience. And I, I'm just a firm believer that um, you cannot actually tell me something about something that you have not experienced, that you have not lived yourself. Listen, if I go back to being married for 38 years, Come on, if I got 38 and you don't have any, right? I need to hear from somebody else because there's some things that you can only experience where being in it. Those are some of the teachers. So yeah, the answer is 
there are some established ways and 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 I think we and I wanted to be diverse because Brian says something and David says something and they're mm -hmm. all right and I just wanted to add a a, a piece about uh, experience and mentors and having lived life, life will teach you how to be a man. If you're listening, you know, some people don't want to listen because it's teaching you every day. Yeah. Am I right so, about that? Dr. Yes, David, can I, yes, you sure. can, can I, I want to challenge that, 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 that thought right there. Uh -huh. And there, there's, there's a saying that we've, we've embraced recently more so, and that is experience isn't always the best teacher. And what, what, and what we mean by that is, you know, like, the, let's take the book of Proverbs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm pointing to the word of God. Sure. And the book of Proverbs was ideally written for young men. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the very beginning of it, Solomon wrote it for his son. Mm -hmm. How to be a young man, you know? And, and, and like I said, and throughout the word of God, you find how to be a father, how to be a son, how, how to be, like I said, a leader. Mm -hmm. These things are there. You know, if you're able to rightly divide it and, and you go through all the 66 books and what have you, mm -hmm. I just I just wanted to uh, highlight that. And I and I definitely agree with that. And 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 because we're having a discussion, I love this aspect because I'm a teacher. Right. I was I was 30 years in the, in the school system and I remember. What I learned from the book. But then I re remember what I learned after I got into the classroom. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so no matter what is taught to me or how I read it, my experiences then brings light because I have to go through certain things to understand, even though my teaching is good. And, I, and I'm, I'm definitely not pushing back on anything relate, related to God and God's word. But once God gives me something, guess what? I got to live it out. Got I have it. to experience it. And then it is my experience. And not only just like I have, I have a saying and I, and I need to move on because the hour is getting late. I have an experience when uh, uh, a saying, when it comes to experience, how many times have you heard people say, if I had to do it all over again, I would do it different. How many yeah, of you yeah. heard that? Right. You raise your hand. And <laughs> somebody said, if I had to do it all over again, I'd do it do different. It well, I argue that that is an incorrect statement. If I had to do it all over again, I would do it different. What I think it should be, if I had to do it all over again with the experience that I now have, I would do it different. Mm. Because if you don't, if you oh, don't yeah. take in the, the experience, guess what? You would do it how? Same way. The same way. Yeah. It's the experience that teaches yeah. you to change your mind. It's the experience yes. that yes. teaches you that that was right or wrong, or I need to do something different. Other, if you don't have that experience, guess what? You will do the same thing over and over again. And, Let me bring they, this yeah, go ahead. Go ahead no, I was just going to say quickly, you, you remind me of something I share with many of my mentees and try to reinforce within myself daily, the difference between ignorance and stupidity, mm -hmm. you know? And ignorance meaning you don't know, you don't have the data, you're not informed, you don't have the experience. Stupidity mm. being you have all the above and you continue to make the same mistakes. And I guess as I get older, I have a lot more patience for the ignorance and I have very little for the stupidity, if that Absolutely. makes sense. So I wanna bring our conversation to the co a close. Um, I just wanna ask if you guys can give me one or two uh, solutions um, for men today, and that men are facing many challenges. Some of them are having difficulties in being free to be a man. Mm. I just want both of you to offer just one or two uh, solutions that will help a man to be free. Well, I would start out by asserting don't suffer in silence. Okay. And be encouraged not to do that mm. and, to, and to reach out. Reach out to you know, to men that, that, that are in the community. There are men there to help. You know, they're, they're, if it be, I mentioned the community centers because you see a lot of people are men of faith or faith-based based organizations that have exposed themselves to the community for this very purpose, mm -hmm. myself included. The very reason why you see me, you know, one of my mantras is, you know, the Lord said, let your light so shine before men. So, I believe I strongly, and I'm very passionate about this, and that is just exposing you to me. Mm. That's going to make a difference in your life. Because when I have young men come into our 
our, our forums for tattoo. And because I can tell the way they're looking at me. I know you're looking at me. I want yeah. you to look at me. <laughs> you know, and everything about me is intentional. From this from the J's on my feet to to the jacket, I, whatever, whatever, all of this is intentional because I know young people are impressionable. Right. So what my my answer is to reach out, reach out to it's it's very obvious, it's right in front of you. Sometimes it, it may not appear to be that way, but it's right in front of you. Don't suffer in silence. Reach out. All right, Brian. Yeah, Dave, I I, I would uh, concur strongly with what David I just said. That feel comfortable asking for help. It doesn't mm. reduce your manhood. It enhances it. There. I would also add, uh, redefine what success is. If you ask yourself what is success, and you're talking about self, then I suggest to you that's good but expand that definition to include beyond just you, the we, our, and us phenomena, the collective there, because that's when we truly begin to actualize success. And also ask yourself, where do you get your validation from? Right, right. Where do you get your okay from? And if you get it from the external world and you're relying upon Facebook or, or social media or, or to tell you you're okay, I think you're kind of missing the mark and you're extremely vulnerable. I believe you need to get that validation from within yourself. And if I may say so, the upper room. The upper room. Yeah. As we're closing, Brian, I want you to uh, hold up your book again and just uh, mm -hmm. tell us about that resource right quick. Yeah, uh, Visions for Black Men, a wonderful book by Dr. Naeem Akbar. Uh, it talks about healthy manhood. And I'd like to mention one other uh, a website uh, there's a wonderful organization called A Call to Men that's been around for about uh, uh, a decade or so that really focuses on anti-misogyny, focuses on ha healthy manhood. And I think the website is acalltomen.org, if I'm not mistaken. But you can uh, do a search and it will pop up, A Call to Men. All right, Thank David, you, David, quickly, you, your website again? www.momentumcm.org. And on that site, there's a page called MB Keeper and stands for my brother's keeper. And all of that is, is, is part of our mentorship program. All right, and I want to, I'm just checking something here. Uh, I want to close by offering this resource. It's titled uh, Five Steps to Manhood. Uh, Becoming a Man Must Be Earned and Learned and it's written by Baron Warren, Five Steps to Manhood, Becoming a Man Must Be Earned and Learned, Baron Warren. And I recommend this book, especially for young men, because he talks about how to get to manhood. He distinguishes um, the difference between a man and a male. You know, just because you're a male don't mean you're a man. Come on, somebody. And it's, yeah. I heard this said earlier, it's not about age, right? It's not yes. about age. It's right. about maturity yes. and yes, your sir. discipline and your commitment and all yes, those sir. things. That's what makes you, and responsibility. Right. That's what makes you a man. So uh, uh, Dave, this is a great book for young men uh, that you work with that they can read it. And so I wanna take the time to, uh, first of all, to thank my guests for coming on, uh, Dr. Brian Easley and uh, you, Pastor Dave. David Ames. I wanna thank you. This was an outstanding conversation that we had today. And of course, I wanna thank the host of uh, Project 365, Pastor Portia Wheatley. You know, when you uh, offer your platform to other people, that is Christ Jesus right there. Cause you're saying it's not about you particularly, but it's about God and God's work and the, and the work that we have to do in the world. And I wanna thank her for giving me this opportunity to be the guest host of this um, this program, Project 365. I think this is the 350th day that they have been on at 1 p.m. And so tomorrow, they're going to have another show. Uh, tomorrow, Brother Linwood McDaniel will be the guest host on uh, Project 365 Live. So be here tomorrow um, at 1 p.m. for another outstanding conversation uh, about men and the impact of a man. So again, I want to thank all of you for tuning in. And uh, Pastor Portia, we'll turn it back over to you. Thank you so very much, gentlemen. I do appreciate your time. 
and the information that you shared to God be the glory. Thank you for that closing. And we're going to end on that. Blessings to you all.